Well, hello, Shoreline Church. Uh, today's devotional is not just a devotional, but it's a devotional and a personal message from me uh, to, the con to, the, to the whole congregation of Shoreline Church. Um, we are in such a unique time in history. Uh, I know that for many of you, you are dealing with a, a weight and a heaviness of all that's happening in our world, from the coronavirus and what's still continuing from that uh, to sheltering in place, uh, for many of you to economic hardship and being out of work and waiting to find out when you can go back to work and if you even have a job, uh, to a lot of political tension happening in our world and now, uh, now riots and uh, acts of injustice that are heartbreaking and that uh, cause every, every person to mourn uh, when life is lost senselessly, when violence is, is, uh, is brought into our world. And so I know many people's hearts are very, very heavy. And with that in mind, I want to read a passage that addresses some of the things we're facing right now. Because if, if you think that uh, racial tensions and injustice and violence and conflict, if you think there's anything new about that, uh, then, then you haven't done your homework. You haven't looked at, at, at human history. All through human history, this has been a challenge. And in the first century, in the days of Jesus, there was very specific uh, racial conflict and tension between people groups. And it was particularly between the Jewish people and those who were called the Gentiles, those who were non-Jewish people. And the Bible addresses this conflict, this bitterness, this underlying tension between different groups of human beings who God looks at as all people he loves. He loves every person. Jesus died for every person. And, and God looks at our divisions and our conflicts, and it breaks the heart of God. And so in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, uh, God is addressing by the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul this tension between the Jews and the Gentiles, this conflict, this bitterness. Uh, and, and, and particularly, there's an image that's used in the passage I'm going to read in just a moment. Uh, in the actual temple area, there was a courtyard of the Gentiles, the non-Jews, and then a wall there, and then a gateway, and you went into the inner temple, which is where the Jewish people could go. And that was called the dividing wall between Jews and Gentiles as, as a physical dividing wall. Listen to God's word from Ephesians chapter 2. Listen to how many times the word peace is spoken, but also listen to the language of breaking down the dividing wall between different groups of people and bringing them together, joining hearts and bringing unity for the glory of Jesus. Listen to God's word from Ephesians chapter 2, beginning in verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus... You who were once far away, that was the Gentile peoples, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Jesus Christ unites people together. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups, Jews and Gentiles, these radically fractured, racially divided people, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. He's saying Jesus tears down that division, tears down that wall. By setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. That word peace comes up again and again. That God wants to make people one and join us together. And in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross. By which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who are far away and peace to those who are near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. The Apostle Paul is writing those words inspired by the Holy Spirit. He used to live in those conflicts. He, ha he had that, that, he felt that racial divide. He felt that superiority. He felt that division. And he saw Jesus Christ tear down those walls. That needs to be our prayer. And our answer, the solution to the problems we're facing today is found in Jesus Christ. And that's why tomorrow at our night of worship at 615, we are going to focus on the central focal point of our faith, and that is Jesus Christ. We are going to gather together tomorrow night at 615, and we're going to celebrate Jesus. But getting ready for tomorrow, I want to invite you to do something that, that maybe you've never done before. I want to invite you to a day of prayer and fasting all day tomorrow from the time you get up until our evening service at 6.15. First, will you pray? We already sent you a prayer list of different needs that, that, go, from, that go from COVID to financial challenges to, to a lot of the political challenges to the, to the people challenges and conflict and racial tensions and all those things to pray through those things for Jesus to show up and do things that we can't do. And so will you pray all day tomorrow and will you also fast? 
Will you fast from all food for the day or fast for one meal or maybe fast from all media for the day? And every time you wanna grab your phone and get into media, every time you wanna eat something, just pray and pray, pray for our country, pray, pray for a vaccine for COVID, pray for people that are out of work right now that need jobs, pray for peace in our cities, pray, pray where anywhere we need to confess in our hearts where we have been bitter, where we have, where we have, we have been estranged, where we've built up walls between races and between peoples, pray and confess your own heart to Jesus, but pray for all of these things. And then join us at 615. And we will sing songs of praise focusing on Jesus because he's the solution to our challenges, to our problems. Then, then we will open the word and we will, we will hear about the apostle Paul and how he followed Jesus, whatever the cost was, because that's what we need to do. Then we'll hear about this couple, Richard and Sabina Wormbrand, who, who were persecuted in ways we can't even comprehend, but they held to Jesus Christ, whatever they faced. Then we will have communion together and we'll break the bread and we'll drink from the cup and we will celebrate the unity that we have in Jesus Christ and pray that we would be united with all other peoples. And so I wanna invite you tomorrow to a day of prayer and fasting completed by a time of worship together in your home, online, but in your home, coming around God's word, coming in worship and then coming to the table of Jesus Christ and standing together in unity. Would you pray about devoting tomorrow to that kind of commitment, to prayer in a deeper way than you have, to crying out to God for all the things that we're facing right now as a nation, and then gathering with us for worship in the evening. I wanna give one other invitation. This Friday evening at six o'clock, we, we have a worship event called As One, and the worship leaders from Cypress Church and from Monterey Church and from Shoreline Church all came together, and they recorded a worship event for you to have in your home this Friday at six o'clock. I hope you'll commit that time together with, with us in your home and worship Jesus, hearts united between the different churches in our community following the same Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great day and prepare for tomorrow, a day of prayer and fasting and worship. God bless you.